The Prophet ﷺ in this beautiful narration says and mentions, لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ That a fasting person will be given two glorious moments of joy. He will be given two momentous occasions of celebrations. One of those moments of celebrations, one of those moments of joy and jubilance will be experienced in this world. فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ يُفْتَرْ it will be in those moments where he is or she is enjoying Eid with their family. In the moments of enjoyment with the family. In the moments of enjoyment with the community. In the moments that we realize that now the month of Ramadan has been completed. And we are allowed to eat and drink and spend time with our loved ones in different ways. And these are indeed moments of joy. These are moments of celebration. Eid is a celebration. And the days that come after Eid are indeed moments and days that we celebrate. They're days that we enjoy. But an intelligent person is able to realize that moments of celebration are not the completion of the task itself, but they're moments that we are allowed to celebrate that can motivate us to move forward. No one celebrates as if they've completed the most enjoyable moment of their life when they finish their high school. They celebrate. But now they know they have to go through college. No one celebrates without any stress on their mind or without any continuous goals when they finish their bachelor degree or their MCAT. Now they know they have med school. No one even celebrates when they finish med school because now you know we have residency. An intelligent person realizes that moments of celebration are there to encourage us. They're there to motivate us. They're there to push us forward. The first moment of celebration is something that we all experience. And if this is the type of celebration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us for obeying His commands for 30 days, we can only imagine the type of joy and jubilance and celebration that will be given to people when they will be able to experience the ultimate joy of farhatun inda yalqa rabba. The second moment of celebration. The second moment of joy. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Say to them, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is through the virtue of Allah وَقَالَ إِبْنِ عَبَّاسِ هُوَ الْإِسْلَامِ It is through Islam that people should be happy. وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ يَلْقَى رَبَّهُ We can only imagine the moment of joy that we will experience when we are finally able to meet our Creator. When we are able to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have these clips on YouTube, and you can watch them in different places, where it's the compilation of people celebrating too early in sports, in different places in life, when they celebrate too early, and they become, it becomes the most humorous and laughed upon moments in sports. Because it's celebrated too early. My dear friends, what would happen to us if we continue celebrating too early? Without the sense of understanding that there is a second celebration that I look forward to. A celebration that will be such مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ A celebration that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard about the joys that you and I will experience when our loved ones will be brought back together and we will be able to enjoy the company of our Prophet. We will be able to enjoy the company of those loved ones that we so dearly miss in the moments of celebration in this world that that Eid does not remain an Eid without our loved ones. Those smiles are not true smiles and that laughter is not really laughter because we are missing those people that we used to enjoy those celebrations with. Imagine when the announcer calls on the Day of Judgment. That we want you to enter Jannah as a family. When Allah announces, When Allah calls out and says, Where are the parents? 
And why are the parents and the children separated from each other? Why is it so that the spouses are not in the same spot? Why is it so that the siblings are far away from each other in the layers and in the different ranks of Jannah? Bring them together so they can enjoy the blessings of Allah in Jannah together. There is a celebration on Eid where we eat our sweets and we eat the different meals that are prepared for us and we are indeed supposed to enjoy those days because if we don't enjoy those days, perhaps we will never enjoy this day. But imagine Allah announcing, That bring forth for them every type of fruit, every type of dessert, every type of meal. Such beautiful meals that when we enjoy them and when we consume them, we will say that perhaps it is the same thing that I just ate yesterday. And the announcer will say, no, no. It is not the same. Imagine every bite that we take, the next one becomes more delicious. And then the ultimate moment of enjoyment when an individual is actually able to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can imagine the type of joy that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi experienced when he went for Mi'raj. Sitting in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, every single person amongst us and all of the believers, inshaAllah, will be able to experience fi maqa'adi sidqin inda malikin muqtadir. A sense of closeness. Was experienced by our Habib. But imagine you and I in the true celebration of life where we understand that we cannot continue celebrating too early, but there needs to be a continuous effort. And an effort that allows us to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will say to the people of Jannah, Do you want anything else? Do you wish to enjoy any other blessing? And the people of Jannah will respond by saying, Ya Rabb, what else could we be given? Adakhaltana al-Jannah wa najawtana min al-Nar wa jama'tana bi ahlina You have freed us from the excruciating pain of Jahannam and have given us entrance into the gardens of Jannah and have united us with our family members. What else could we ask for? فَكُشِفَ hijab, And the veils will be lifted. And all of the hundred layers of nur that will be present between the Creator and His creation will be removed. And every person in Jannah will be able to experience the epitome of enjoyment and joy at that very moment when we will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for those that continue excelling, yes, they will be given the average, mediocre goals of enjoyment, but they will also be given something better. And Ibn Abbas says, هَذِهِ رُؤْيَةُ الله. This is the ability of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sahabas, when they heard this, they said, Ya Rasulullah, how will it be? That all of us will be in Jannah at that same time. How will we all be able to see Allah together? Would some of us have our vision blocked? Will there be barriers in between like how it is in this world? But there are levels of seating where the people that can earn more and pay more may have a closer seat in the auditorium and the people that have a better degree. Yes, it is perfectly fine that they have a better spot to sit at and a better view of what they want to see. But... Who will be given the right view of Jannah and the greatest view of Allah on the Day of Judgment? Will it be based upon the factors of dunya? Or will it be based upon something that we internally hoard in our hearts, which is Iman? And the, the Prophet says to them, that, Oh my companions, on that day, every one of you, based upon your Iman, will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كَمَا رَأَيْتُمُ badr The same way you see the moon on the 14th night. That everyone is able to have the full view of that moon. And everyone is able to stare back at that moon as if the moon is only shining light upon him or her. And this is how we will experience seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is farhatun inda yalqa rabba. So my dear brothers, youngsters and sisters, as we continue after the month of Ramadan, that light that we were able to experience, the heights of our spirituality that we were able to, we were able to enjoy, let us use it for the ultimate joy. Let us motivate ourselves to use that so that we can also one day see our Prophet ﷺ in the Akhirah. There was a companion by the name of Abdullah radiallahu an, And his last name has different narrations. But the Prophet ﷺ, when he went to Ta'if, on his journey where he was pelted with stones and he was made to bleed, amongst the people that he met was a youngster by the name of Abdullah. And this youngster, upon sight of the Prophet ﷺ, fell in love with him. Because that was the Prophet's sight. Ibn Hajar says more than 33 people accepted Islam just by seeing the Prophet Hassan Mathabit says that if this man وسلم, came down with no miracle, just sat on a chair his entire life, just by seeing him, you would know he is someone unique and special. رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا ظَاهِرَ الْوَضَاءَ مَلِيحَ الْوَجْهِ حَسُنَ الْخَلْقِ لَمْ تَعِبْهُ ثَجَلَ وَلَمْ تُزْرِي بِهِ سَعْلَ قَسِيمٌ وَسِيمٌ فِي عَيْنَيْهِ دَعَجْ وَفِي أَشْفَارِهِ وَطَفْ وَفِي صَوْتِهِ سَحَلْ وَفِي لِحْيَتِهِ كَثَاثَ أَكْحَلْ أَزَجْ أَقْرًا إِنْ صَمَتَ فَعَلَيْهِ الْوَقَارِ وَإِنْ تَكَلَّمَ سَمَاهُ وَعَلَيْهِ الْبَهَاء أَحْلَى النَّاسَ وَأَجْمَلَهُمْ مِنْ بَعِيدٍ وَأَحْسَنَهُمْ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ أُمِّ مَعْبَدْ رضي الله عنه narrates to her husband when she describes the Prophet Sallam perhaps the most comprehensive description of our Habib where she says رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا ظَاهِرَ الْوَضَاءَ I saw a man with a striking appearance مليح الوجه حسن الخلق beautifully created لم تعبه ثجلا ولم تزري به صعلا his stomach was not protruding neither was his head overly big every limb of his body was perfectly fit upon his body قسيم وسيم a specimen of a creation في عينيه دعج he had a contrast in his eyes where the black was excessively black and the white was immensely white وفي أشفاره وطف and he had a natural length in his eyelashes أكحل people will think that he's wearing kuhul but it was natural azaj aqran and he had a natural redness in his cheeks his eyebrows were naturally arched she says that if he was to, if he was to remain quiet and if he was not to speak even the birds would stop chirping they would listen to see if the prophet is about to speak and when he would speak everyone would remain silent he was the most beautiful person that you could see from a distance. And contrary to the beauty that we experience, the closer he would come, he would become more beautiful. And he would look even better. So Abdullah falls in love with him. And he says to his uncle, that please let me go with this man by the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and let me be with him. And he says, if you leave, I will disown you and you will have nothing to, to survive with. So he stays with his uncle. The years pass, and as he grows older, he turns to his uncle one day and he says, احترق قلبي شوقا إلى لقاء الحبيب. احترق قلبي. He says, my heart is burning. It is as if I have a flame in my heart. It's burning. To meet my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please let me go. And he says, you can leave, but you cannot take anything with you. And he leaves. And he travels now to Madinatul Munawwara, where our Habib Sallallahu has migrated towards. And the Prophet is sitting in the masjid with his companions. And this man enters into this gathering. And the narrators mention that he walked from Ta'if to Madinatul Munawwara. And by the time he reached there, the clothes that he was wearing were ripped up. And he hardly had enough cloth to cover his aura. And he was tanned and scorching with heat. And you could tell that this person was just about to pass out. The moment he entered into the gathering, 
he saw the Prophet and the Sahabas from a distance. And the Prophet says, Ustur akhakum, cover your brother. And as they go to cover him, he falls unconscious. They cover his body, they give him water to drink, and he comes forth to the gathering of the Prophet. And he says, Man minkum Muhammad. Who is the Prophet over here? And the Prophet says, I am Muhammad. And he comes forth and he falls on top of the Prophet. And he hugs him. And he starts to hold him tight. And he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, do you remember who I am? And the Prophet of Allah says, Yes, I do. You are that youngster that came and met me in Ta'if. This same Abdullah, this is the joy of meeting the Prophet of Allah. Imagine the joy of meeting Allah in the Akhirah. This same youngster in the battle of Tabuk, traveling with the Prophet ﷺ, he says to the Prophet of Allah, O oh, oh Prophet of Allah, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, farzuqni bi shahada to grant me martyrdom. And the Prophet of Allah raises his hands and he says, Allahum mahfad, Allahum mahfadhu min suyuf al mushrikeen. O oh Allah, protect him from the swords of the non believers. So he makes the dua that actually protects him from being killed or martyred in this blessed battle of Tabuk. So he says, Ya Rasulullah, why would you make such a dua? I want shahada. And he says that there are other ways to become shaheed. If you pass away traveling in the path of Allah, if you are hit while you are on your camel, if you become sick, if you have a stomach disease, if you, are, if you pass away in a plague or a pandemic, like many of our loved ones, you are also shaheed. And he remains quiet. On the journey back, he falls off his camel and he becomes shaheed. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari says that in the middle of the night, I wake up and I see a lantern, a lamp that is lit and a grave that is dug. And I see from my distance that Abu Bakr anhu and Umar anhu are standing outside the grave. And I come closer and I see the Prophet of Allah وسلم, inside of the grave. And he is making sure that every part of the grave is even. And he sets it. He says, then the body is given by Abu Bakr and Umar anhu. They give it to the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet of Allah takes his body and lays it to rest inside of this grave. And then the Prophet of Allah comes out and he covers his body and he says, Oh Allah, I make you a witness that nahnu radin bihi, that we are happy with him. Fardi bihi, so you also become happy with him. We are pleased with him, so you also be pleased with him. Abu Musa anhu says, We did not know who this person was. But everyone that witnessed this scene echoed the same statements. Ya laytani kuntu makana. That we wish, we wish that we were in his spot. Because he left the world with the Prophet of Allah being pleased with him. And this was that same companion. So my dear friends, there are two moments of celebration. The first moment of celebration, we celebrate and enjoy the most we can within the paradigm of, our, of, our, of the rules of our religion. But then the second moment of celebration should not be blurred to us, should not become obscure to us, but rather should become crystal clear to us that everything we are doing, these are moments. These are moments. But the true end destination is meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Prophet sallallahu on the day of judgment when the Prophet told Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that there are, there are seven doors or eight doors of Jannah. And there will be such people that every door will call their name. Every door will call their name. So sahabas inquired, is there anyone amongst us that will be amongst them? And the Prophet of Allah says, Abu Bakr huwa minhum. He will be amongst them. This was a moment of celebration. But it wasn't the ultimate celebration for him because he continued making an effort to the moment that he left this world. So as we enjoy these days and these weekends that we have left, um, especially after Eid, these are moments that we enjoy. 
that we keep in front of us the truest moment of celebration, which will be, inshallah, farhatun inda yalqa rabba, the moment we are able to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that He is pleased with, in the moment that we are able to enjoy the blessings of Jannah with our loved ones. Qulu ameen wa akhuda alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.